I do want to give a very important health update. And similar to what we saw a short time ago, the air quality is deteriorating very quickly in our state as a result of the Canadian wildfires. And that being said, over the next 24, I'm sorry, 48 hours, we're anticipating the smoke and the haze to come all across the state. And we've been watching this, uh, monitoring this, and it's going to enter the New York skies tomorrow morning with uh, western and central New York hit first Wednesday. And by Thursday, Thursday, you're going to see the smoke affecting New Yorkers here in the city as well. Um, a reminder that a good quality index, air quality index, is 50. That's the one you like. And we're expecting the numbers literally tomorrow across the state to be in the unhealthy range. And they'll reach hazardous levels in much of our state. So I'm announcing that as a few minutes ago, we've had to announce air quality advisories in different parts of our state. As I mentioned, Western New York, Eastern Ontario, Central New York. And we're going to be monitoring this very closely. Uh, in Western New York, we're expecting uh, unhealthy about 151 to 200. Uh, unhealthy for Eastern New York was going 101 to 150 and other parts 150. But as we saw last week, this can deteriorate very quickly. You may be at 150 one moment and then all of a sudden it's 200. And we actually experienced 400 in the city of New York and Syracuse was also the hard hit. So we all know what that felt like. You know, we actually had some situations and people talk about smoke alarms going off in their homes, you know, indoors in Albany, I, it was hard to breathe. So we know how detrimental this can be. So we are going to be out there vigilant, and I'm appreciating the media for broadcasting us across the state. So we are making sure everyone is aware. We're going to make sure that information is available to those using public transportation, and we hope after today more will. Uh, we're going to be having onboard announcements about what people should do, what the quality is, and also uh, making available masks once again, because the safest thing is if you have to be outdoors when the Air quality is what that is. It's going to be wearing an N95 mask. I've also directed my team to activate the wireless uh, cell phone alert system, the emergency system that'll give alerts in areas that are hazardous and tell people what to do as well. So we are also making sure that you know, word is out about people running outdoor activities. A lot of children are off to camp this week. A lot of kids are at camp, and they need to be have the camp counselors be aware these kids need to be protected. They're younger. They have, uh, some of them have health challenges. And making sure that they have everything they need to probably stay indoors, but also have masks available to the children as well. We're also giving alerts to people about outdoor workers, uh, making sure that supervisors know that it is not recommended unless people are wearing masks. And those who are vulnerable to health conditions should remain indoors. And so we're going to encourage people to check their zip code uh, go to airnow.gov, airnow.gov, and it's also available on your cell phone if you go to the weather page. It tells you a number and usually some uh, scary color. Uh, orange and red are really bad. So high-risk populations, uh, children, senior citizens, pregnant women, people with heart disease, respiratory issues, they all should avoid the outdoors. So, uh, But also, that's the unfortunate news that we're experiencing. I would certainly say we did not deal with this in the years past. If you want to know the effects of climate change, you're going to feel it tomorrow in real time. This is not something that we're talking about future generations dealing with it. We are truly the first generation to feel the real effects of climate change, and we're also the last generation to do anything meaningful about it.